Hello, this is Dr. K. In this video, we're going to be designing the data model for the Affable Bean project in the NetBeans e-commerce tutorial. At the very end of this process, we're going to go into NetBeans to refresh the connection to the database. But other than that, we'll be working exclusively in the MySQL workbench. To get started, open up the MySQL workbench and create a new model by choosing File and then New Model from the menu. Name the new file affable underscore bean dot WMB, where affable and bean are both capitalized. That should make your workbench look something like it does in this slide. Then click the icon for Add New Schema. Give the schema the name affable bean. One word, all lowercase, and choose UTF-8 Unicode for the default collation. This slide shows a nice little entity relationship diagram for our Affable Bean project. We've essentially got four tables here, a customer table, an order table, a product table, and a category table. The relationship lines between the tables tell us whether they are one-to-one -one or one to many. For example, an order is placed by a single customer, but a single customer can place many orders. Likewise, a product belongs to only one category, at least it does in our Affable Bean project, but there may be many products in the same category. For this reason, the relationship between customer and order and the relationship between category and product is one to many. Now let's look at the relationship between orders and products. An order can consist of many products, but it's also true that the same product can be in many different orders. Therefore, the relationship between order and product is many to many. Now there's a slight problem with this. Real relational databases, like the MySQL database we're using here, cannot directly have many-to-many -many relationships. Therefore, we're going to have to find a clever way to circumvent this problem. We'll see how to deal with this issue soon. But the first thing we're going to do is create what MySQL calls an EER diagram, an Enhanced Entity Relationship Diagram. To do that in MySQL Workbench, you click the Add Diagram icon under the EER Diagram section. If you want to see what this looks like, you can go back a couple of slides, but it should be fairly obvious. That will open up a project space that looks like it has graph paper on it. Before we worry about any relationships, we're going to create our tables. You do this by clicking the Place a New Table icon located on the left-hand side of the graph paper. The first table is going to be the customer table in all lowercase letters. You define a table by telling MySQL what columns it has in it, including the column name, type, and any other relevant information. For example, the customer table will have columns ID, name, email, phone, address, city region, and CC number, which stands for credit card number. Each of the columns has a type. So ID is an integer, and name is a text string that can be up to 45 characters long. The other properties of a column include PK, which we check if the column will be the primary key, and N, which we check if the column will be non-null, UN, which we check for numeric columns if we want the number to always be non-negative, and AI, which we check for numeric columns that we want to be automatically incremented whenever a new piece of data is added to the table. In the case of the ID column, all of these are checked. The ID is the primary key, so it must be unique. It can't be null. It's an unsigned number, and it's automatically incremented when a new record is added. In the case of the other columns, 
there's a restriction that the data in those columns cannot be null. For the other tables, the columns will be defined according to this slide. Some things to notice are that the data type of the ID in the category table is tiny int, since there are only going to be four categories in all. Regarding the customer order table, we probably would have named this table order, but order is a keyword in SQL, so we couldn't use that. The amount field has type decimal 6, 2, which means up to six digits before the decimal and two digits after, which is perfect for money. And remember, in this case, we're using euros because we're in Prague. The date created field will get a current timestamp when the order is created. And the confirmation number must be unique. In the product table, the description field has type tiny text, which means you can use up to 255 characters as long as your characters take up one byte each. The last update field gets a current timestamp when a new product is created, and the field's value is updated with the current timestamp every time the product is modified. Now let's look at relationships between tables. We need a one-to-many relationship between the customer and the order tables, because one customer can create multiple orders. To do this, first click the new non-identifying one-to-many relationship button. This is the one-to-end button with the dotted line. A non-identifying relationship like this one just means that the child object, in this case the product, can exist and be identified independently of the parent object, in this case the order. So let's go ahead and click that button. And then we want to click the parent object. The parent object is going to be the many table in the one-to-many relationship. That's the order table. It's the one that's going to contain the foreign key. So let's go ahead and click that. Finally, we click the child object, the customer table. So let's go ahead and do that. Once we do, the relationship link will appear and a foreign key index will appear with the names that you see here. Finally, you can select the relationship link and a dialog box will appear. Type in a reasonable name for the relationship between the order and the customer, like is placed by. Note that even though this relationship is called one to many, the many table comes first here. It's the parent object. It's the first table you clicked, and it comes first in the sentence that uses the relationship name. Perhaps they should have called it a many to one relationship but they didn't. When you finish creating a one-to-many relationship between customers and orders, you can go ahead and create a one-to-many relationship between categories and products and name it so that a product belongs to a category. As we mentioned earlier, relational databases cannot have many-to-many -many relationships directly. Therefore, when you click on the many-to-many -many relationship button in the MySQL Workbench, it will automatically create another table for you in between the two tables that have a many-to-many -many relationship. Here, the default name of the new table is Customer Order Has Product, but we've changed the name to Ordered Product. We've also added a quantity field to the ordered product table so that we can keep track of how many of one kind of product is needed in a particular order. Recall that a dotted relationship line indicates a non-identifying relationship, which means objects in the relationship can exist and be identified independently of one another. Now, that is not the case here. An ordered product cannot exist independently of the order and the product objects. 
the primary key of the ordered product is made up of the order ID and a customer ID. Therefore, this relationship is an identifying relationship. Once you're done setting it up, your Enhanced Entity Relationship, or EER diagram, for the Affable Bean project in the MySQL Workbench should look like this. Now that we have a design for our data model in the form of an EER diagram, we can use the diagram to create a DDL script that can be executed and create the structure of our database. DDL stands for Data Definition Language. To create the script, make sure that the MySQL server is running. The default storage engine in MySQL Workbench should be InnoDB. If you want, you can check this by going into Preferences, then Modeling, then MySQL. From the Database menu, choose Forward Engineer. Accept the defaults in the Connection Options section, making sure you put the correct user, root, and the password. Under Code Options, add Drop Object Before Each Create Object and Generate Drop Schema. These options will help us with debugging. Under Select Objects, just keep the defaults. If you want to see what the DDL script looks like, you can review it. Once you hit Continue, the script will automatically be executed, and the Affable Bean database with the design model you created will exist on your server. Finally, go into NetBeans and refresh the connection to the Affable Bean database. You should now see the tables and fields that you created in your design model. And that's what's involved in designing the data model and getting it into your database. In the next video, we'll talk about how to set up your page views with CSS and HTML.